Okay, let's hear from our next amazing speaker. Hanley Prinsloo is from I Am Water Foundation. Hanley is a South African free diver, speaker, writer, and ocean conservationist. She is the founder and executive director of I Am Water, an ocean conservation trust dedicated to conserving and protecting the world's oceans through human experience. Hanley's going to talk to us about that human experience and how we protect the world's oceans. Hanley. Thank you. Good morning. It's so great to be here today. And everybody keeps telling us how warm it's been in the UK lately. <laughs> and having been in Miami for a couple of weeks, we're like, really? But it is lovely, lovely, lovely to be here. And I've just actually come from Switzerland, from Zurich, where I did a talk on the connection to oceans, which is always a fun thing to do in a city, in a country that has no ocean and to try and convince people that it affects them and it's important for them as well. So for you, it's much easier. We're right on the coast here. But to deepen that remembrance and that understanding, I want you to uncross your legs if your legs are crossed, sit up a little bit straighter, stand comfortably, bring your right hand onto your belly and close your eyes. And start deepening your breath to breathe into your belly. So when you breathe in, feel your belly expand. And when you breathe out, let it drop back. Keep your eyes closed. Connect with that breath. And all day, every day, we breathe. From the first breath we take to the last breath we give. Our bodies breathe for us. And as I'm sure you've heard, every second breath you take is oxygen from the ocean. Forests are valuable, but the ocean gives us even more. So take a few more breaths, and with every second breath, imagine yourself in water. And on your next breath, open your eyes. And this is the world that I've been living in for the last 15 years as a free diver. In free diving, we really challenge this idea of we need to breathe. Because the whole sport of free diving is about not breathing and being comfortable with that. And how much we can do underwater on one single breath of air. So one last breathing exercise. I want you to take a really big breath with me. Exhale all the air out of your lungs. Start in your stomach. Good. And for the rest of today, I want you to keep taking those big breaths. And even though I don't look like a very large human here on stage, I did some work with the South African Sevens rugby team, and my lungs are bigger than the captain, Kyle Browns. <laughs> so just so you know, it's not about size, it's about how you use what you've got. So my background, oh, hello, yes, is in competitive freediving. On the left is in a competition where I dive down to 56 meters with no fins down and back up again, breaststroke. And on the right is with my favorite piece of equipment, my monofin, which I've been down to over 65 meters and back up again on one single breath of air. And for many years, I counted meters, I counted seconds. I can hold my breath for over six minutes. And I was fascinated with what my body could do. Something felt impossible. I would change my stretching. I would change my diet. And suddenly I could go deeper again. And research kept trying to keep up, trying to keep up. How can the human body go so deep? We're terrestrial beings. We identify with primates. And yet we can dive and we can hold our breath deeper than we believe. And they figured out something which I like to call our inner seal, also known as the mammalian dive response. Your body remembers water, and your body has the same adaptations for being underwater as whales and dolphins and seals have. So whether we're sitting here in Cornwall under a tent, or in Switzerland, or in Chicago where I was just before that, our bodies remember being underwater. The moment your face touches water, your heart rate slows down. This is called bradycardia. 
As soon as your body starts noticing rising levels of carbon dioxide from breath hold, the vessels in your blood vessels in your arms and legs constrict and flush the blood back to the core to get pumped to your brain. The final thing that happens, how many of you here have ever consciously thought of your spleen? I know, it's a total low glory organ. Does everybody still have their spleen? Every now and again, I have an audience where somebody don't, doesn't have their spleen anymore. So your spleen is part of your endocrine system. And more than anything, it uses, reuses, and fixes hemoglobin. And it's a storage space. It's a warehouse for oxygen-rich hemoglobin. And when we hold our breaths and when we dive down, and re this research was first done on seals and then on the human body, amongst others, my spleen was watched under an ultrasound while I was holding my breath. As my body started noticing these rising levels of carbon dioxide, my spleen constricted and presses oxygen-rich hemoglobin back into your bloodstream to give you more oxygen for holding your breath. Your body remembers water. And this is what I love to call our inner seal. And in this photograph, this is from Cape Town, and these are my inner and outer seals at the same time. We're lucky to have loads and loads of Cape fur seals, and playing with them is a reminder of that playfulness and that connection I feel in my very own backyard. So this picture here is not from Cape Town, as you can imagine, but this is two adult sperm whales. I had the privilege of meeting in Sri Lanka off the northeast coast of Trincomalee in Sri Lanka. And at the top of the photo, you see a small pale squiggle. That's me with my monofin to give you an idea of size. And we were in Sri Lanka to swim with blue whales. And we were looking and looking and looking for blue whales in the south, but there was so much shipping that we decided to go to the north and search further in uncharted waters. And we traveled three hours offshore in a fishing boat with a 9.8 horsepower motor because 10 horsepower and up is only for the military. So 9.8 horsepower going out looking for blue whale spouts. And we kept seeing these sideways spouts. And the, the, the fisherman said, oh, no, 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 you can't get in the water with those. Those are sperm whales. And he didn't know the word in English for sperm whales. And as we came closer, we saw these wrinkled bodies. And I said, please, please, I really, really want to get in the water. And was a super pot of over 80 sperm whales. And I slipped in the water. And having read in the heart of the sea the story behind Moby Dick, and knowing about how intelligent these creatures are, their ability to read not only emotions but intentions, I was terrified. I got in the water and I thought, what if they don't like me? These animals can stun giant squid with their sonar. They're the largest toothed creature on the planet. Dear God, let them like me. And I got in the water and I hung there and I opened up my body, my heart, my thoughts, my emotions. And I just thought, thank you for letting me be here. You're so beautiful. You're so big. Thank you for letting me be here. And these two large females turned front of their head straight towards me and started scanning me gently. Loudly, I would have been immobilized like a giant squid. Gently, it felt like a sledgehammer in my sternum. <laughs> For over a minute. And I just hung there suspended in the sonar, hoping that they see the love I feel for their environment and for them. Then they turned and looked at me with their actual eye. And looking into that huge wrinkled eye, you know, there's someone home and ours is a shared planet. It is not a human planet. It is a planet we share with majestic, giant, intelligent creatures. And somehow we've even come to believe that we are the keepers and the custodians of this planet and these animals. Even that, I believe, is arrogant. We are merely sharing it. It is not ours. Now, I don't know if you've heard, but when sperm whales hunt, they can go down to three kilometers deep and hold their breath for over an hour. And when there is a baby in the pod that is too young to do this dive with the adults, they leave the baby at the surface with a young female whale to babysit. I'm not sure what I communicated that day to these two female sperm whales, but I was the young female that got to babysit a baby whale. The adults dive down. The small gray shape ar arrived, scanned me, put its little head right against my body, and then started playing. 
And then I would go down, the little whale would come down, and by little, it's still three times my size. <laughs> and we'd swim around each other. And then, of course, I would have to breathe, and I'd go back up to the surface, and the whale would be like, you're useless, can't you hold your breath longer? I'm a baby. And then I would go down, and we'd continue these games, interacting, sharing water, sharing space, and having moments of belly-to-belly -belly trust with an animal that I hope and pray to this day is safe in its blue world where it lives in three kilometers depth of water. And this experience for me towards the end of my freediving career was a realization that meters and seconds and time isn't enough anymore. The only thing I want to do is find more, more relationship, more connection. This is a giant manta ray from Ecuador. Up until a few years ago, we only believed there was one species of manta. How did we not know that this seven meter wingspan creature was unique to its cousin, the Manta Alfredi or reef manta ray? This is a fish tornado in Mexico, in the Baja California Sea of Cortez. Over 25 years of protection, you can dive into a fish tornado like this. Very few places in the world do you still, still, still see this kind of biomass. And this marine protected area is an example of how, like Heather was saying, we need more fish, less plastic, and protected areas. And this is a tiger shark from the Bahamas, another misunderstood creature. This individual is called Emma. And as with the baby sperm whale, today what gets me more excited than any record ever did is having moments of belly to belly with a wild creature where you build trust and build relationship. And if you want to talk to me afterwards about how to get belly to belly with a big shark, I'm happy to share that with you. <laughs> and this is my garden. This is my backyard in Cape Town. Kelp forests, full of shy sharks, less shy sharks, <laughs> large sharks, octopus, urchins. And any time I need to reconnect and find hope, I pull on a mask of fins and I step into this blue backyard. And I truly believe in that saying that you protect what you love. And I don't think that facts and statistics truly change behavior. They can inform decision making, but if we're gonna see true behavior change that is irrevocable, people need to feel something. And we feel that when what you love is truly threatened, we act. And having fallen so deeply in love with the ocean and her creatures, there was no way I could go back to competitive freediving just exploring and being another freediver in a bikini with big animals is not enough. There has to be more. So I started I Am Water for me to create meaning. And having traveled around the world, I saw the same thing in my South Africa, in Mozambique, in the Maldives, in Ecuador, in the Seychelles, every single place I went to. Coastal communities living walking distance from the ocean where the children have never been in the sea. And we criticize them and we judge them for their fishing practices, for their littering, but there's no connection. And that's the whole work that we do with Iron Water, working with seventh graders in coastal communities, taking them out of school, taking them to the beach, ocean education, rock pool exploration, beach cleanups, and snorkeling, taking them to see what's in their ocean and how they can protect it. And this is a short little video clip from Cape Town showing a little bit of that work. Why do they say the sea is no place for me when it looks big enough to fit the world? Maybe that's why they call it a rich man's paradise. No place for the likes of you and me. They say there is monsters to drag me into the deep. But why are their eyes full of wonder, waving me in to dance among diamonds?
It says, don't fear. I am everything I dreamt I would be. And this little girl, Simam Kele, has grown up her whole life walking distance from the ocean without ever having put foot or face in the water. And to see her eyes opening underwater for the first time, that's what motivates me to get up every morning and to keep doing what we're doing. And in the last couple of years, Peter, who's with me, who's my co-founder of I'm Water Ocean Travel and the photographer of all the images you've seen underwater, we started I'm Water Ocean Travel, taking people to these big animals, teaching free diving, getting to experience what made me fall in love with the ocean so much. And we work with high-level decision makers, big business owners, big corporations and private individuals to on a high level create change through heart opening, at the same time continuing with funds from those trips into our grassroots with the schools work we do. So we're in the full-time business of making people fall in love with the ocean. And it's not a difficult job. <laughs> That's what's really, really helpful. And it's for me such a pleasure to be here today and share that story because I've always felt with, um, with Finisterre that it's like having family a little bit further away from home. And since I've come across Finisterre and become friends in 2010, my whole wardrobe is full of Finisterre from the very first jacket I was given in 2010 because the flipping stuff lasts forever. So I never have a reason to ever go shopping for anything else. So every time I'm in London, I get a few more pieces and happily wear it in Cape Town because the water temperature and the climate's not that different. So it's such a pleasure to be here and I'm happy to chat with anyone who wants to speak more about ocean connection and heart opening. And have a wonderful day and keep breathing and remember those breaths are from our beautiful ocean. Thank you.